In a previous video, we discussed the scaling of blockchain with Emin Gunsira, a professor at Cornell University who's currently visiting EPFL. In particular, we discussed a leader-based protocol that would allow to scale it to hundreds or thousands of transactions per second. So that's wonderful. Um, still, 5,000 is, is good, um, but it's not really, you know, it, it, it serves today's Visa needs on an average day, perhaps. Uh, but we would really like to even scale it higher than, than the numbers I quoted you before, you know, two to five thousand and then max of fifty thousand. We'd like to go to millions of transactions per second. I would like every thermostat to be connected to a blockchain. I would want every single appliance in a house to be connected and communicating and rendezvousing with other devices and people over some kind of an auditable uh, chain of some kind. So if we're going to achieve those, we need much, much, much better scale than even 5,000 or even more. We need millions uh, if we can. So how do we do that? To that end, uh, we developed a different protocol uh, for essentially taking weight off of the blockchains themselves. What we developed is a system called TCHAN for taking the, uh, the transaction bulk off of a blockchain, but still making, making sure the transactions are well-ordered and secure. So the core idea here is, if you have a blockchain like Substrate underneath you, what you can do is you can say, okay, um, you and I will engage in a lot of transactions and a lot of back and forths. We could store all of them on chain, right? I give you five bucks, you give me three, I give you two, etc. back and forth, we go like this, and we can go for a long time. And instead of recording them on the chain, what we could do is this. We could take some money off the chain. I take $100 off, and I provably take it off the chain, and so do you. And now we have a balance of 100 slash 100. And when I want $5 worth of service from you, I say, uh, hey, here's five bucks. My ba update my balance to 95 slash 105. And from that point on, we both know that I have 95 and you have 105. And uh, we can go back and forth. If you want to send me three bucks, you simply update our balance to 98, 102. And we go back and forth like this. And we can go back and forth like this for a long time without hitting the chain at all. All of those transactions between the two of us would remain solely between the two of us. At some point, we would say, okay, well, it's time to settle. We'd like to now go and transact with other people. And at that point, we can say, okay, well, whatever the balance is, let's say 120 to 80, uh, then I get to settle and keep my 120, I give you your 80. And, uh, and we go our merry ways, having left on the blockchain only two records, uh, an initial setup transaction, followed by a subsequent settlement transaction. We did not have to bother the chain at all for the transactions between us. This all sounds easy, but one tricky aspect is to guarantee the safety of two people transactions. Of course. So the transactions between the two participants have to be done in a secure manner. And, uh, and it's essential that we do it in a manner where we cannot misbehave. So if we do this willy-nilly, if we do it in the in the, in the in the in software in the most naive implementation, you will have access to everything that happened. And let's suppose at the end of the day, after a lot of transactions, you have no money and you've given it all to me. But you have access to the initial settlement transaction, and you could close the channel with the initial state as if nothing happened that day, essentially rolling us back and stealing a day's worth of services from me. So we have to ensure that this doesn't happen. Now, this is really cool, and actually quite similar to the way our societies are actually organized. When I buy food at a restaurant, I directly deal with the restaurant owner, and I do not bother every citizen in Switzerland just because I happen to be using the same currency as they are. In the T-Chan protocol, we do it with the help of some secure hardware. So the secure enclaves that I talked about earlier, they allow us to ensure that you can run the software in a manner where you yourself cannot tamper with it, where you yourself have no access to any of the intermediate states until the moment where you decide to settle, at which point everything is frozen and, and transacted on the blockchain. So this is a fascinating approach because now we have very, very high speed transactions between the two of us uh, that are decoupled entirely from the blockchain. In fact, once we initially set ourselves up, we can be completely disconnected from the internet and execute entirely in private. Our transactions remain private to the two of us, 
and uh, we only need to update the, the blockchain for the settlement part. Has this technology been deployed? We built this system and we've deployed it on Imperial College in the UK as well as Cornell University. And uh, across the Atlantic, we're able to send money in as little as 30 milliseconds, which is almost entirely spent crossing the Atlantic. This is the speed of light on in fiber across the Atlantic. And, um, and the, uh, uh, the throughput that we're getting on a single channel, not across the system, but on a single channel between two pairs of, of communicating computers, is 120,000 transactions per second. And the computer can have many of these channels open with multiple parties at a time. So you can get many millions of transactions per second using this off-chain uh, transaction trick. So by migrating the, uh, the, the sort of small, simple transactions, the microtransactions off-chain, you can get enormous, enormous amplifiers in scale. Yeah, it sounds like you're distributing a distributed system. Right? Absolutely. We are just redistributing it towards the clients. And that's exactly how you get scale. Because the moment you uh, decouple the two, you allow people to, to verify each other in private, knowing that they cannot misbehave and knowing that they cannot violate the core of the system. And then the core of the system can, uh, you know, it's slower because everything you do on chain is visible and validated by everybody. That will necessarily always be slower. Uh, but you can push the frequent operations off the chain and make them go at a tremendous clip. That's an interesting thought, like, uh, like the idea that, uh, well, after all, the blockchain is not that, it's still a bit centralized in some sense, and mm. you like, this kind of distributed even further. Like. That's right. So the blockchain is not centralized in the physical sense, but it's, a cent it's the central data structure. It's an essential data structure where access to it is limiting your speed. And so what this trick is doing is essentially saying you don't have to access it every single time you need to carry out the transaction. You can validate the counterparty independently in some circumstances. And in those cases, we can move the transactions off the chain. So the TEE is an effort to resolve that problem, to make a new trusted environment where people can run applications that do sensitive stuff and really trust them. It's going to allow us to encode uh, new, exciting, rich policies for how we govern our lives into a blockchain and allow us to, to carry them out with full confidence. And the, what that really means uh, remains to be seen, but I think it's going to make us all happier and will carry us into a better, more transparent future.